Hello there, welcome to Jimothy Listens. My name is Jimothy and today, oh baby, it's time for the new N-Mix mini album. FE304 Stick Out is, I guess, a sequel to their last EP break, which is maybe my favorite K-pop mini album of the year so far. It's up there for sure. It is fantastic. N-Mix are... I've called them time and time again the most exciting group in K-pop around at the moment. Talent off the charts, a bit of an actual boundary pushing experimental style to their music. I don't have to tell you how good they are, you already know. And so I'm excited to get into this new EP. I have no clue what they're bringing on this one. I, as always, am completely spoiler free. I've seen concept photos, but that's it. No teasers, no nothing. Haven't heard the highlight medley. They also dropped one of the tracks a couple days early. Have not heard it. So I'm excited to go in and see what's happening. As I like to do, we're gonna check out the album first, just listening through it so I can sit in the music and not focus on anything else for that. And then we will go back and watch the music video for the title track so we can give that the attention it deserves as well. So with that being said, let's just get right on into this mini album. We have six tracks on this mini album. Track one is the title track, Byol Byol Byol, see that? And then we have five B-sides to get through, which, yeah, I don't know what's going on with any of them, but let's just dive into this title track, see that? Crank my headphones up. Oh, we're doing like a cool kind of rappy thing. atmospheric kind of marching drums, bit of like a, a war call, a war chant almost. Pugin starting things off. That's kind of gross, I love that. It's a bit like darker and more low energy than your standard NMIX title track, which is interesting. Oh, and suddenly that's quite light. That little, just like, plucky double bass or something is really nice. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I guess also that kind of very laid back, old school, boom back hip hop vibe has been really popular recently. And so throw a bit of that in there. It's a bit chill, it's a bit laid back. Yes, thank you. Switch up. Not really. <laughs> Slight switch up. I like those cute little ad libs popping in there. Oh. A lot happening in that little field there. And then almost slightly country vibes for a second there. And bring it back into that groovy. Boom Bappy. Like it's kind of Boom Bappy, but also still fits with that apocalyptic wasteland style that we got with um, Break, the last EP. And I guess we're kind of continuing that. It's definitely groovy. Nice. Obviously the vocals are always gonna sound good. That's really pretty, especially those layers of harmonies there are really nice. Love a horn. I love a horn in pop music. Little, never mind, there wasn't one there. But the little just like horn stab, I'm always there for it. There are so many different sounds being used. Like different drum sounds, different synth sounds, different instruments being thrown in there. So even though it's quite kind of laid back and kind of a bit calmer than most end mix title tracks, there's just a lot going on in terms of the sound of it. Cute. All right, give me a second. Does that look better? Oh, we're getting such like fucking god rays from these lights behind me here. That's okay, that's kind of cute. Okay, so immediate first impressions. Uh, it's not my favorite MX title track, 
I mean, obviously, I've literally just heard it once, so take that with a massive grain of salt. Um, it just is a little less energetic than the stuff I like. I just, my personal taste, I love big explosive balls to the wall stuff. It is still very cool. Uh, the switch up is one of the more cop outy ones that Enmix have done. Barely even a switch up, they more just kind of say, hey, we're Enmix, and then we get a slightly lighter second verse. But that, I'm just saying that because I am, I'm a switch up purist. I am one of the very few people on this planet that thinks that OO is the best switch up that Enmix have ever done or probably will ever do. That I, I like my switch ups to be jarring. And so when this one is, you know, still like same tempo, same vibe and everything and comes in, I'm like, eh, yeah, you know, take it or leave it. But still, it's a cool song. It has a very nice vibe to it. The groove is sticky, the little, uh, vocal melodies, especially that when the beat drops out, just going into the chorus, there's a little like, whoa, I don't know what the melody is, but that sounds really cool, and I'm sure that'll get stuck in my head after a couple more listens. It's a cool song! Obviously the vocals as well go crazy, because it's N-Mix, they have some of the best vocalists in the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. And I'm excited to see what the rest of the album delivers. So let's get into these B-sides, starting with track two, Sicka. Featuring Kid Millie. I have no clue who Kid Millie is, but I guess we're about to find out. Oh, it's a Dem Joints track. Go and get it, bring the chaser. Go get her. You already know Sika. Salyu rapper? You already know Sika. Immediately, this is more my vibe. Ooh, that's kind of great. I mean, a Dem Joints K pop song. Nothing beats it, you know? Get a Q-Gin. Gross crunchy synths in there. <laughs> a B and G just yelling over it. Okay, that's super cool. The guitar. That's kind of nasty, especially that like discordant piano notes just kind of hitting completely like off key, just blah blah blah. I love that. Ah, oh, of course Kid Millie's a man. Of course it's a male feature. And we're back. <laughs> I'm still yet to hear a Korean male rapper that I like. Maybe one day. Then it's not very good. Yeah, I love that piano! <laughs> randomly kind of plonking on keys in the background, especially with that electric guitar hitting that slightly eerie discordant melody in there. Oh, Lily! <laughs> Hit me with that vocal cry, sicka! This is really cool. And I mean, Dem Joints is always good for kind of like a energetic, fun B side. Ooh, okay, bringing some big vocals at the end there. Get a bit more energetic in it. God, G this G was song. <laughs> She sounds so good. Alright, that bangs. The man's unnecessary, but that bangs. Let's see, track three. Red light sign, but we go. That's illegal. Uh, oh. <laughs> Forget the jokes, that synth is really nice. Ooh, the way that just kind of like revolves around is a little bit stuttery. That's gross. <laughs> Let's go. There's our crunchy Jersey kick. I do love how crunchy that kick is though. That's really cool. <laughs> yes, K-pop jumping on the 2000s EDM revival. This is so girl EDM of them. 
<laughs> Those synth waves just creating this real like thick layer, but it still has that really kind of just like big in your face groove. Oh my god, that hook is fantastic. Kujin is amazing. The atmosphere of this, because this sounds just like real kind of like, you know, groovy fun shit, but the like texture of those synths and the kind of crunch that everything has makes it feel like it's like science fiction taking place in the stars. That's so nice. I love this chorus, which feels so 2000s. This is incredible. This is so good. And then, especially that uh, contrast going from the really kind of punchy, sticky chorus into something this like melty, smooth, like just whirlwind hook. Yes, stack those vocal layers on top of each other. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so fantastic. That is... Oof. Okay. Halfway through the album. Track four. Beep beep. Puppy puppy song maybe? Let's go. And next. Ooh. Yeah, very kind of light and breezy. <laughs> dramatic switch up from how thick and heavy the last song was. Never mind. This is also a little bit thick and heavy. But it has that kind of light skittery pace. And the um that really like fast kind of percussion that keeps the energy up, keeps it from getting really like bogged down. Really nice. Still waiting for a proper change up. So, at like one of the songs needs to have a proper switch up. A lot of really tasty drum sounds on this EP. A lot of like crunchy, really like heavy impact kind of kicks and thuds and stuff. Oh, Salyun's voice. I just love her tone. It sounds so delicious. Another really nice contrast from kind of like, I guess this time it's the reverse order, that kind of heavy, sticky, plotty kind of pre-chorus into now this really like bright, upbeat, light, fast moving chorus. Gorgeous vocal. <laughs> There's really just super high harmonies there. Mm -hmm. Yes, build up this final chorus. This is so much fun. I'm having a fantastic time. I feel like this is this album's boom. Just especially the way we just get that chorus over and over again to kind of pump up the energy. That's really great. Okay, track five, moving on. Gorgeous guitar sound. We get a little bit shoegazy in here. You bring Paranol in for the production. That that's how you do a fucking ballad. I love... Because, you know me, I don't like a ballad in most albums, but a rock ballad? 
I could do a rock ballad. There's nothing at all that makes me feel small. Because it's energetic, it's big, it's got some tooth, it's got some force behind it. Especially this kind of real, like, the hazed out guitar sounds, like it is a little bit shoegazy, is really good for that kind of sentimental vibe to put, you know, towards the end of your album. Really nice, bittersweet feeling. I mentioned Paranormal at the start of the song, like, that kind of feel. Especially Paranormal's latest album. I'm just gonna go off my tangent for a second, but the Sky Hundred, I think it's called. How it's the real like heavy, crushing kind of like such like noisy guitar sounds, but has this feeling of like optimism and pushing forward. This is giving a, a popified version of that. That's really pretty. There's vocal harmonies. A mix of really learn how to do a ballad over these last two albums, like after we got, you know, cool and my gosh, suddenly now going to like, you know, break the wall, which isn't a ballad, but like the kind of big emotional end of the album thing, and then this. I need to see this live ASAP. And mix Australian to a win. When? There's nothing at all. Yes, bring it down. Oh, I'll cry. I'll cry right now. Okay, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. But like, oh. you just gotta, you gotta headbang to it. It's got the feels, oh, the crescendo of all of the vocals and guitars and everything. I also love that it's a little bit longer. Like, I mean, it's only three and a half minutes, but for a pop song nowadays, that's two years. So I'm glad it got the, the time to flesh that out. That's a gorgeous song. And then we move on to our closer, Love is Lonely. A little like synth wavy vibe. I'm also hesitant because moving on sounds like such a perfect closer. What are we putting after that? Pretty. It's a very kind of nonchalant start, which seems like it might be potentially hiding something to come in either the chorus or later on in the song, especially putting it at the end of the album. Mm, not yet. Pretty, or am I setting myself up for disappointment expecting some big moment? We'll see, we'll find out. Really pretty reverby build up in this pre chorus. Build those drums up. This is one heck of a build. Let's see if it's gonna pay off. Okay. That's fun. Yeah. That's all it's gonna be. That's the biggest it's gonna get. And that's fine. <laughs> Unless we get an MX change up. This would be a fantastic time to throw in an MX change up. No, this is cute. It has those kind of sentimental vibes for a closer. I just, if you're gonna go through this much of a build up, I want it to pay off. I guess second chorus is bigger than the first. We've got some extra layers. Maybe it'll just kind of keep progressing. Mm -hmm. 
I need to not judge this on the character of just, is it a big closer? And judge it on, is it a good song? Because the answer is yes. Especially this kind of style of song is not something we've heard in K-pop a whole bunch. I don't think, at least. I can't think of any examples. It is very pretty. It's definitely something I could hear one of the kind of current pop girlies doing. I like this little refrain. Okay, it's cute. It's a cute closer. Lily's gorgeous voice to finish and that's the album all right so stick out I yeah another fantastic EP from Nmix I think this is interesting because it's I mean it's a little bit different it's not just big standard you know pop songs all the way through it's got a little bit of a different vibe going on we start off with a couple more hip-hop focused tracks we end with a couple more rock based tracks or like kind of synthy synth wave based tracks it's interesting i think it's maybe not as immediately grabbing as break was but i also don't think that necessarily makes it worse especially with this being a series that i possibly will continue i think it's fun to have the big banging enjoyable to everyone one to kick off with break and then in the second one you can kind of throw in oh maybe let's see how people feel about like a rock ballad or like this kind of darker hip-hop track or maybe something a bit more laid back and do these different things that kind of branch out and try some new stuff i think that's a great move and i mean they pull it off really well i don't think there's any experiments or new things on here where i'm like eh, that maybe didn't really work out as well Sure, some things might not be my favorite style of song, but that's just my personal taste. I, I definitely think there's a lot of people who are gonna go crazy for Love is Lonely. That seems like something that maybe like the Billy fans or the Olivia Rodrigo fans would go crazy for. Me acting like I'm not a Billy fan when I'm wearing her pants right now. I don't, how can I put that so you can see? get the idea but then also for me and my personal taste there's still a lot to love Sika is a deliciously nasty gross kind of hip-hop song uh, beat beat is the fun poppy vibes but really for me red light sign but we go <sighs> that may have just immediately rocketed itself to one of my favorite end mix songs that is fantastic the nasty swirling deep heavy synth layers going on that chorus which just suddenly brings in like the 2000s edm vibes which i think is a good thing to hop on because as much as people are still sticking in that y2k vibe in the rest of the world and the rest of music or i guess some of the more kind of like underground stuff the 2000s EDM is coming back in a big, big way. And so for Nmix to kind of just dip their toe into their own little Nina Jirachi girl EDM thing, I think that is really, really fun. And then the rest of that song as well was also just super nice and delicious and tasty and does a lot of really cool things. Honestly, I think the thing that I'm the least, not the least enthused by, but it's kind of the least interested in is the title track, <laughs> which is, Odd. Not that it's bad, but like I said, it's just kind of, I think it's kind of the least interesting thing there. But also, with that, we haven't seen the music video. And I mean, literally, as I was sitting there listening to the title track before, I was thinking, hmm, this sounds like something where having the music video with it is going to be a much better experience. It almost sounds like it's designed to have kind of visuals along with it. So maybe I've shot myself in the foot for once by doing song first before video, but Let's watch the video now and see if I like the title track a bit more. Well, not even if I like it more, if I'm just a bit more excited by it. Alrighty, let's go. What was that? That was a little disclaimer there or something. 
This video will wake up the black sheep within you. After watching, you may find yourself unable to keep things hidden and feel okay with being different from others. Oh my gosh, yes, it's a coming out anthem. You may start acting according to your own desires and imagination. Do not hide your true self any longer. Oh my god, it's an unmasking anthem. Okay, <laughs> let's get into it. I mean, they all look amazing. Like the teaser photos, concept photos looked great. Sitting on that bulldozer. Cute. Again, the aesthetic, we do have that kind of wasteland, apocalyptic, industrial concrete kind of feel. I feel like I'm not saying much, but I actually just am quite focusing quite hard because it's, it's a little embarrassing, but choreography seems cool. Almost a Harlem Shake in there. The kind of, mm. I love a Harlem Shake, it's one of my favorite moves. <laughs> <laughs> the choreography tries to be like, yeah, this is the switch shop moment, but the aesthetic of the video is exactly the same. We're just smiling now. Lazy switch up. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Sleep paralysis demon. Doing this kind of groovy hip hop style like a week before Young Posse comes back is brave. Lily, get it. Those vocals, this like ending refrain is really nice. What's ha what is the story here? I don't... I don't know. Cute little bit of floor work. What was that that was in her? A star? A little star thing? Honestly, the coolest thing about this is the choreography, which I mean is very normal for a K-pop video, but... Get it you. Story, lore, give me something. Or just a really pretty shot of Sayun, that also works. With little ghostly children hanging around, yep, love that, great. And that's it. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, that's it. All right. I got no clue what's going on there. Not a freaking Scooby. Okay, so the music video. I I think that kind of goes with how I feel about the song is that it has a very cool vibe, but doesn't really do a whole heap substance stuff sub sub. sub doesn't have a whole heap of substance. Like I said, when I was listening to it, there's all of these different sounds being used and a lot of different stuff kind of packed into there. But the actual like song at the core of it is pretty weak. I don't know, I just, aren't re I'm not really hearing it at least. And I feel like that's something that up to this point and mix have been really good about. Sure, there's all of these kind of flashy lights and bells and whistles and different gimmicks happening in their songs, but at the core of it, just like the actual songs themselves have all been really good. Like even in OO, both of the songs that are mashed together on their own are very compelling and interesting. 
and that's kind of been the same for all of NMix's title tracks, that even Dash has this big kind of mishmash aesthetic to it and a lot of stuff going on, but the core of it, the melodies and the verses and the structure and everything are really solid and tight. This is maybe kind of one of the least put together NMix title tracks that we've heard, which is why I maybe I'm not getting as into it immediately. I'm sure I will after more listens. And even if I don't, and you know, this ends up being the song that I'm kind of like, yeah, I love all of Ed Mix's songs. See that other little whatever on? This is a very good song to be the one that I'm a bit whatever on. You know, a lot of groups would kill to have this as their best song. So I'm still here for it. And the EP, the EP is mwah. Super stunning. Really, any release from an artist should be either fantastic or interesting. And this is a really interesting release. And I think a lot of people will also find it to be a super fantastic release. Uh, I'm happy with either. I think a good discography should have a mix of both. And so to have a really just kind of interesting EP like this out there, I am, I'm here for it. And it also makes me excited to see where we're gonna go next in this Iron Oxide FE304 series. If it's, I don't know, I guess a trilogy is pretty common. If we're gonna get a little just wrap up third part to it and see how that fits into the whole vibe, we'll see, we'll see. I still am just very, very invested in Nmix and still think that they are the most exciting group around. But what do you think of this comeback? What do you think of See That? What do you think of Stick Out? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, click the like button. Subscribe to see more of moi. Have a great day. Go run some red lights. And I will see you next time. Mwah. Love you. Bye-bye.